Another episode is brought to you by DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top rated sports booking app. Not only is it safe, but it is secure and reliable. And for all the first time users out there, if you use the promo code MOTES, you will receive up to $1,000 in deposit bonus money. So Deke, tell them all to stop wasting time, download the app and use the promo code so they can get an opportunity to make a little money. Big time media Dude, report I brought controversy this topic that up took to you place. And I forgot about it. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I, was ready to, I was ready to end the podcast. I completely forgot about this. Yeah. So um, for those that don't know, yesterday, Mark Madden, who is a, a big time media personality here, sports analyst in Pittsburgh, love him or hate him. You got to respect his track record is there. Former ESPN employee as well. Um, had a, he had put out a report that he had sources that confirmed that TJ Watt um, skipped out on his exit <laughs> meetings. So to give you context for the exit meetings, the way they work is most because I, I actually when I was doing my other radio show yesterday, I had to realize this while I was on air. Everybody doesn't have exit interviews. Most people's exit interviews are when they're getting fired. In football, you have exit interviews every year. It doesn't matter if you're under contract or not, player of the year or just a practice squad guy. It's mandatory. It's supposed to be mandatory that you have exit meetings every year. Okay, so as soon as the season ends, um, some places they'll do them the day of the season ending, right? So last game was Sunday. We come in on Monday. Everybody's having exit meetings on Monday. Here in Pittsburgh, we do it a little bit different. Um, Coach Tomlin, he likes to push the exit meetings back a, a day or two because he's typically, yeah, he, he's one of those guys. He's low-key depressed when the season ends. He's like, I never anticipate us losing. So when we do lose, I need time to like recuperate and figure out the structure of what we're going to do going forward. So he typically takes a couple of days beforehand. But as a whole, you're supposed to have your ex meetings. You'll typically meet with your head coach, your uh, coordinator, and your position coach. And then for guys that are in contract talks and things like that, you obviously talk with your GM at various points. But um. Mark Madden's report said that T.J. Watt essentially skipped out on all the exit uh, interviews, and they said that he was very, he was noticeably upset. Now, knowing T.J. personally, Can I, say I do quote? know he said, "Send my shit oh, to yeah. Wisconsin." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what you got right there. I appreciate you on that. So, yes, he, he, that that was uh, the, in the quote as well. But then, obviously, T.J. comes back with the rebuttal. And TJ hardly ever responds to media people like this. So TJ responds and he simply says the gist of it is, man, I I would like to hear who your sources were because for me, Coach Tomlin, Kevin Colbert, and Keith Butler, who obviously DC head coach and general manager, he said that he met with them where all of them agreed that they met and that was never the case. So to me, I mean, this is the thing when I think about it as a whole, (laughs) <laughs> I don't think like like the problem is this. We can do the whole who's telling the truth, who's not. I personally think that both of them could be very true. I just think that from Mark Madden's side, whoever his source is, it could have simply been. Maybe they, they were lying. Understand. No, the, the, no, nah, just tr- tr- the reason I don't think they were lying okay. is because when, when you have sources and especially knowing Mark, he's not dealing with low level sources. So He's getting it from valuable contacts. That's why when I talk about beat writers and different people, like certain ones I listen to a lot more, is because I know some of these people that they're dealing with. So I don't think that that was the case. But what I I do think is this, man, if you aren't in there, right? Say you're the source we're talking about. If you're outside looking in, you see TJ frustrated or whatever, and you don't know what's necessarily going on. And you hear people just, oh man, I heard, I overheard it was ex interviews and this and that. I don't think he went to his. Oh, he just bounced. He might have said this. You can just see how it becomes more of a word of mouth thing. Yeah. And then from there, you get Mark who reports it. Obviously, Mark is a big deal in Pittsburgh, so it blows up. It becomes a big deal. But I don't necessarily think that that couldn't have been the case from his side. But then from TJ's side, I'm like, let's be real. I've been to my exit interviews, but in terms of the severity of them, some of them have been a little bit more serious. Others, I'm like, I don't even want to be in here. And the coach knew I didn't want to be in here because you're about to get fired. So and, and not me. I'm talking about the coaches. So the, the exit interviews, they go drastically different. Like just to give you some context, I've been to some when I was up in Buffalo, obviously. I walk in, I'm just like, we're going to sit here and talk, but you're about to get fired. So why are we even having this conversation? You know, and, and then you get the text. 20 minutes later, hey, um, it was great to coach you, man. I love you, man. It was a blast, but I just got released. 
So you're like, all right, well, we kind of knew this going in. But then you're here in Pittsburgh and my exit interviews here in 14 was, well, look, man, we love how you play. We're looking to do business with you going forward. For me, I didn't care what they were saying because I already knew I was going to get paid regardless if it was here or elsewhere. So my mentality going into that meeting was a lot different. So if I'm TJ Watt, okay, you're upset definitely because the season ended short, but you know you're about to go break the bank. That's what the exit interview for you is. It's not, hey, TJ, we really want you to work on this and work on that. It's, listen, man, we're going to be hollering at you over the off season, man. Get your agent. You know, we're going to get these numbers worked out. That's what the exit So that's why I'm like, to me personally, I don't think it was a big deal. And being being a person who's been in what nine exit interviews, <laughs> I, I could just, it, it, it's not as big of a deal as they made it. But I do think the reason why it got blown up, number one, is because it's TJ Watt, but number two is because the contract situation surrounding it. They know what's looming, and if this is the thing that could create the well, they didn't TJ didn't resign because of this. This was the first sign of it then I think that's another reason why it really got talked about so much more. But as a whole, man, I, I can tell you, I've been in exit interviews as a six round draft pick that, you know, was on a eight in, or excuse me, was on a, a four and 12 team. That exit interview was a lot different than when I'm in Pittsburgh and we're 12 and four, uh, uh, 11 and five and things like that. Like it's just different in terms of how these exit interviews operate, man. But as a whole, man, I, I don't think it's a big deal. Yeah, I'm with you too. I thought it was hilarious. And my question was, I was with you. Like anything Mark Madden does, I don't ever really think he's lying. I think he always nah. just like tells it like it is. So I'm thinking like, well, and, I don't think he would just and who make does something it benefit up. more. Yeah. Think about this. Does it benefit Mark Madden to lie about that? And then he loses credibility going forward because let's be real. TJ is only going to be here for at best 10 years, right? That the NFL career. After that, Mark is still on air. Mark is still record. Mark still has to cover. So it's like, it doesn't benefit him to lie, but then at the same time, it's like, ah, I can see on the other angle, you know, it, it not benefiting them, but at the same time, why it would be important for them to respond the way that they did, right? Because we've talked about how in the past we don't see this team or certain players respond to the negative criticism from the media or, or report, but to see how quick they were to respond to that, it's like, well, what made this situation so different? Why did you feel like it was important to put these guys' names in this text in terms of GM, coach, and these guys? Like, So that's why I'm like, I can see both angles. But either way, I'm like, the root of it, I don't think it matters. I, I, I Like, being in these things personally, I just don't think it matters. If he was mad and he went there and told Coach T, hey, man, F you, I'm out. Like, I don't think it matters. <laughs> like, for him, it, it doesn't, man. Yeah, if he actually did it, it's actually kind of like a funny story in my opinion. Nah. But then, yeah, it goes, you know, it goes back to what I was saying, though. Like, mm -hmm. Mark Madden, I'm not thinking that he's lying. But then at the same time with TJ, I don't yeah. think he's lying or coming out of the wazoo right. trying to respond to this mm -hmm. if he doesn't have some reason to. You know what I mean? So that right, and right. so that's when I started thinking like maybe the source just lied to Mark Madden or gave him some yeah. faulty information. But then mm -hmm. you said he he has some pretty legit sources. Maybe there was just yeah. some miscommunication there. Who knows? Mm -hmm. But you think about a faulty. Think about what, what we both just said: miscommunication, faulty information. They all are under the same premise of what the facts were diluted. The facts weren't as accurate as they were depicted to be. And the problem is when you go to social media with this information and obviously it blows up the way it does, now the facts kind of get lost and it becomes more of a he said, she said. Or even and just based that, off the quote, because the yeah. quote could be completely missing context. Missing? Oh, no question, man. Yeah. Like they could make it like what TJ is requesting to get out of here. And obviously you could start the rabbit hole. You ready for the rabbit hole, right? <laughs> Not saying this is the case. All right. I got to be very clear because now that we're in the media, I'll say some stuff and then people will be like, oh, he, he said it, man. You got to go. And I'm like, all right. So make sure we're clear on this. <laughs> this is just a, a scenario of how or, or why it becomes a bigger issue, right? TJ Watt says, all right, F this, send my stuff to Wisconsin. He walks on the exit interview. He's noticeably upset. Okay. We just saw JJ Watt in Houston. Noticeably upset with Bill O'Brien ultimately led to Bill O'Brien getting fired. <laughs> we know that J.J. Watt has has shown, hey, when your stars say certain things, they can play the hardball role and get results. So could this be a scenario where now T.J. is upset with the organization? He's upset with how the game has been played and he's already seen how his brother has shown him the way. 
Well, now TJ can do the exact same thing and force himself out of Pittsburgh or force a, a potential new DC or things like that. So you could just see how they started to wiggle the rap. And you're like, how did you connect it? And when you're listening, you're like, well, you do got a point <laughs> because we did see JJ do that. And we know JJ and TJ, I mean, they're both, I mean, mega stars in the league. And we know we're starting to see it now, even with Deshaun Watson, right? Stars are starting to understand their stars. It's starting to get that NBA feel a little bit. Could this be the next one? So you can just see how that dynamic starts to come into play. And then now you got a conversation. Now you got a story and the rumor goes, right? Not saying that any of that was true. Just giving you context on how <laughs> something like well, that could happen. He's now. got only one year left on his contract though, right? Yeah, yeah. So he, if mm -hmm. he wanted to be out, he could just leave after next year. Yeah, but think about this: if he didn't want to worry about, if he didn't want to worry about having to sit out, right, or if he didn't want to worry about his money being altered from fines and things like that, or like a budget you know, that, free situation, even correct, where yes, you're coming up yes, on your so, contract year, maybe you get injured. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and because oh well, man, you know they they had a rough exit interview, they didn't get the deal done during the off season, and then he had to play on the contract. Oh man, so now the Steelers are definitely the villains, and. Let's be real. The other uh, the other alternative is this, right? I said, um, less about the whole TJ Watt working his way out thing. But how if he went in here and just simply said, yeah, this is what I said. People wouldn't even look at him as the bad guy. They would say, well, shoot, with Coach Tomlin and Keith Butler as your coaches, I would say the same thing. We know how people feel. We know this. Like, this is what they would have done. So that's why for me, I was like, it's not a big deal. Yeah, I'm I'm thinking the same thing. Yeah. I, I really don't think it's that big of a deal either. So Yeah, but they definitely they definitely would have went that route though. <laughs> but either way, man, and, and you know, I have that personal shit with TJ White, bro. I don't TJ's temperament, he's fiery in the moment. He's fired up during the game. After the game, he still be a little worked up, but it's not to like what you see on the sideline, because obviously there's been a couple instances where you see his passion start to show and stuff like that. As a whole, though, that's not his temperament Monday through Friday. As a whole, he is a very just soft-spoken, not even full introvert, but just keeps to himself type of guy. So when I think of that, and then knowing the dynamic of a, a, a Butler, a Tomlin, and a Cobra, I just don't see how any of those guys are going to clash to that extent in the controlled climate of being in the facility. If, this, if you were saying this happened during a game, in the locker room after a game, completely fine. I, I, I would probably say, you know what, man, that this this could be very, very accurate. But knowing TJ and knowing those guys and, and being around him for multiple years, now, I just don't see that happening personally. Yeah. What if he even said it in a joking way? Like at the end of the I mean, that's like all right, man. Hey, man, send, my, man, send it out to Wisconsin. Man, I ain't showing up this meeting because honestly, that does, like, when it comes to these exit interviews, bro. Just, just, just give you even more. How long are they? A minute? Two minutes? No, no, it depends. So, so it depends. So, think about this for a guy like Henry Mondo. It's going to be a little bit longer. He's going to go in there, and they're really going to talk about what he needs to improve on, what he did well, if they see him on the team, if they have a role for him, and because of who he is, they'll offer him a contract right there on the spot and basically tell him like, look. You know, you got about an hour to, to decide on this thing, but <laughs> either you can get this contract, we're going to go find somebody else to give it to that's in a similar situation as you. Whereas for guys like that were in my range, right? And I was cut my, I always said I was the middle, the mid class, right? So paid enough in the second deal. So I'm no longer on a vet minimum. I'm, I'm nicely compensated, but I'm not a mega guy, right? I'm not your ABs, your bins in that range just yet. So for me, with my meetings, it was a little bit of both. You walk in, you know, you're on the team, you know, your contract is good. And we're going to talk about instead of it being more of the are you going to be here or not? It's more so I need your role to expand to this. I need you to work on this element of it. Literally, I remember the 2016 going into the 17 season. We knew we were going to draft the linebacker, an outside linebacker. And it was literally, hey, whoever we're bringing in, you're going to need to be more of the mentor role when you come when he comes in. You're still going to compete, but this is going to be the guy that we're looking for. So it was like, all right, if you want to deal with that, you stay. If you don't, all right, well, let's facilitate a trade. And you go from there. When you get to guys like TJ, though, and you know it's, a, it's contract time, especially that conversation isn't being had there. That is, is literally going to be as simple as, 
you healthy. All right. You don't have any off-season surgeries planned. All right. You're good to go, man. Where are you going to be at? Are you going to Wisconsin? Stay out of trouble. I'll see you in April. You know what I mean? We're going to be, we're going to get our talks. We're going to get this deal done. All right. We're going to make sure this happens. And that's the conversation because a deal that's going to, that TJ is in line for, that doesn't get worked out in 20 minutes. That's going to take time. That's back and forth, counter offers, details, fine print. And with your veteran players, which are older players, it's just, you don't have that type of, that's not the setting for that. So that's why for your older players is not as serious because of that. But then also, I mean, for the younger guys, shoot, they get the short end because it's a sign up sheet, right? You all have to sign up to, uh, to, to take these interviews with uh, Coach T and stuff like that. But veterans, I mean, you get priority. So I don't have to sign up on this list. Say you signed up, Deke, and you signed up for Thursday at two o'clock. All right. And you showed up and you've been waiting. All right. It's about to be two o'clock. I didn't sign up at all. But hey, I'm worth the most. I'm a vet. I could walk up right here at two o'clock. And right when you're about to walk in the door. Nah, man, sit down. I'm going. And you got to deal with it. So some of these rookies will sit there for hours just waiting for, for their meetings to get over. But that's just the dynamic of it. I mean, it's a part of the business. So to me, yeah, that's what I said. I still don't think it was a big deal. The interviews, they vary in terms of severity. But for a guy like TJ, that inter- that meeting is five minutes tops. Okay. Tops, man. Well, yeah. whenever he says shit, that's the thing I didn't know. Was he talking about... Yeah some type of review for his play from last season. But from what you're saying, mm-hmm. it sounds like that was contract stuff. Yeah, it's just contract okay. stuff. Because, you're there. listen, after two days, think about this, right? When the game ends, Coach Tom does not have the exit interviews with anyone on Monday. He's not even going to – he might even – typically he doesn't do Monday or Tuesday. Typically the first day is Wednesday because he likes to have a two-day period of just decompressing and getting his thoughts together for what is next. So then from there, you have your sign-up. So if you're TJ, you already talked with these guys on Sunday once the, the team meetings were over, right? Because obviously, you, Coach Simon and, and Butts, they're always around. You're always talking to these guys in the hallway. So if you had that conversation, then you're like, bro, I'm not sitting around here to Wednesday if you just tell me the same thing we just talked about. Man, just send it to Wisconsin. You already know. If you're an outsider, though, you can be seeing that and be like, well, hold on now. That kind of looks cool. <laughs> And before you know it, now you get this report. Was it true? Sure. But if you're a TJ, you're like, dude, I had this meeting. It just wasn't the formal sense of me going into his office, but we had these conversations. And that's why I'm just like, I can see both scenarios being true, yeah. but neither side, I don't think it's a big deal. I think it's, it's only big because of the speculation and how you can build it up. But the root of it, it's not serious at all, man. Yeah, It's not like a, t- a typical exit interview. Like when you think about a person working at Walmart or a person working at Kmart, when they have an exit interview, it's like, dude, we're letting you go and this is why. NFL X interviews are different. Like, yeah, we, we have these things every year and it's mandatory. So it's different. Yeah, I didn't even think of it as uh, letting go or we're parting ways either. Yeah. Like, whenever I hear exit interviews with football, I just assumed it'd be a review from your play from the previous season. Yeah. That was it. But from what you're saying, it's kind of mm-hmm. actually more looking forward. Yeah, because for, for a lot of these guys, I mean, obviously they're studying you got they're studying the guys all season, so they definitely know each player and they have a, a basic like synopsis on each player's strengths and weaknesses. But to really like and Zach Banner talked about this, right? Remember when he talked about, hey, I had a conversation with Coach T and he really broke down what I need to work on and this and that. That's not happening that quick in an extra interview. That happens, you know, when, when you've had both parties had time to really deep dive and just solely focus on one player. If you ask me about the Steelers right now, I have a great general understanding of every player. But for specifics on certain players, I would need to go back and literally just watch them. And then it's that's probably different. an hour or two meeting. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. So you could just see how it varies in terms of severity, but also in the timing of it and why it's just not realistic to have this much of an in-depth meeting two days after the season ended. You go from game planning a playoff game to I'm supposed to know every person on my roster inside and out to that point. And obviously Coach T has a great understanding. Don't don't get it twisted on that. But he would tell you himself that it could be a lot better if I solely just watch this player for an hour instead of me watching my team for an hour. It's a lot more pieces that you're looking at. Yeah. yeah. I just thought it was hilarious, dude. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, dude. I, yeah. I really did. As soon and as it, I got brought up. What's, what's <laughs> funny, too, is we always talk about this, and you know I talk about it, like, oh, we don't want any drama. We secretly did. <laughs> we, see, we, see, we just talked about this for 20 minutes. <laughs> we did, bro. We, it's always drama. I, I, t- I tell you this all the time. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Pittsburgh fans, is, no, we don't want any drama. We don't want to be the Kardashians. Yes, y'all do. <laughs> Just own it. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. You, if you don't want to be a Kardashian, look at your social media. We wouldn't check, respond check to Twitter. it. That's the thing. If any of this exactly. comes out, you just don't mm-hmm. respond to it. But as soon as Listen, it comes out, all if, of a sudden, we put the energy into it. <laughs> if this is Jacksonville and this report comes out, nobody cares. <laughs> nobody. If this is Arizona, nobody cares. But because the Pittsburgh Steelers and we love the attention, good or bad, we love it. We want to be talked about in the media. And then we're going to talk about you not talking about us in the media. And then when you don't talk about us, we're going to talk about you not talking about us in the media and not talking about us enough when you do start to talk. That's what we do. This is still the It is what it is. Or it's just how we would run the organization or how we think it should be done. Oh, always. Because, you know, we know more than the coaches and the GFs. I'm like, for for us to... Steelers fans have the best GMs and head coaches in their fan base. I- I'm surprised that we haven't just dominated and just taken over the whole NFL and just Steelers fans as head coaches around the league because they have all the answers. It's just crazy. We they can did. tell you who to trade for, who to draft, contracts. I'm like, man, well, what, what y'all need us for? We good. I know. <laughs> I'm gonna I, sit down I, over here. I tell you almost every podcast how it should be, right? Like, it's crazy. <laughs> it's <just> crazy. <laughs> so, yeah, man, it, it's it's it's. <laughs> It's a funny time, but I, honestly, like I said, it's it's not important, man. I mean, it's important, but for TJ Watt, that meeting right there, not at all, bro. Okay, not at all. cool. Yeah, that was good not. to get your perspective, though. Just because you have ties yeah. to Mark Madden, you have ties with the Steelers. Yeah, TJ. I'm tied to both of these so guys. Like yeah. you, you probably have one of the most interesting perspectives mm-hmm. on this. And, and and I do feel because of my ties to all parties, I'm able to fully be objective. A lot of people, when they're reporting on this, some people <laughs> love Mark Madden. And they ride with them, right, wrong, or indifferent. Some people love TJ Watt, or they love the Steelers, and they ride with them. And you could just see that divide. Whereas for me, it's like I respect all. I respect Mark Madden and what he does. I respect TJ and what he does. I respect the guys that he named in terms of Colbert, uh, Tomlin, and Butler. But at the same time, it's like I can also see because I know both of these parties. <laughs> I can see how both could, you know, be right and wrong or just how it could be misinterpreted. I don't think necessarily any party was right or wrong. I just think the interpretation was what got uh, was what got flawed. And it's no different when you talk about the, the kid telephone game, right? Deke, let me tell you this in your ear. All right, now you tell this to this person in their ear. All right, now you tell it to that person in their ear. And by the time he gets back over here, that original message, it's been altered a little bit. It's been changed a little bit. Not saying that it was that many people in the chain of command, but you can just see how if you're not the person seeing it directly, these are the type of things that happen. But that's why when it comes to sources, you want to make sure that you have high quality sources because you put your name on the line because you're never going to reveal a source or you're not supposed to unless you absolutely have to or not even then. You never have to unless the person wants to be revealed. Yeah, that's just, you know, your, your journalism code of ethics. Like you don't have to do those type of things. But that's why it is important that if you're going to have a source, you are credible. That source is credible because you're putting your name, you're putting your your integrity, your brand on the line. And you don't have a lot of times to be wrong. I mean, it's you go from Adam Schefter to Ian Rappaport real quick and, and just think about the two and how we view them. Ian can say one thing, but because he's been a little bit, you know, wishy-washy with some of his sources and the, the validity around it, you could just see how we view him when he speaks versus the Adam Schefter who... 95, 97% of the time is money. You could just see the difference with it. Woj and Broussard with uh, Kawhi. Hey, 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 no question. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Br- Broussard can say it. You're like, ah, uh, Broussard, I hear you. What what, what was that? Oh, okay. What was that? All right, it's true then. Like, you, that's just the dynamic of it. So, to me, <laughs> I mean, it's a part of the business, but it's a part of it. But that's why it is important if you're working with sources that they are credible. And it's also important for the source to be reliable. Don't you know, give up that faulty info because you're not just, you know, making a, a little ripple right here. I mean, it's, it's, oh, it's multiple people that can be affected by that. So, I mean, it, it's one of those things, man. We, we, <laughs> you work this, you know, you work in this profession long enough, either as a player or as a media guy and that type of stuff happens, man. 